Congratulations, class of 2012. Uh, as a new teacher here at, at Moose Lake, I've come to learn a lot about you and uh, have a lot of fond memories. Uh, football boys, it was a lot of fun this season as my first year as a coach. Uh, track and field, I had a lot of good athletes and it was a lot of fun this season. I especially want to pick on Spencer for being my TA and all the sports talk that uh, keep me fresh and ready to go every day. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, all the memories from Valley Fair that we had this season and I wish you the best of luck going forward and just let everyone know that you can achieve anything you want to with hard work and determination. Fun memories of you guys. I remember back in eighth grade when you guys did uh, Rube Goldberg machines and uh, it's amazing when you put a little pressure on students. You really see the leaders rise up and uh, a little stress is a good thing, especially at that age. Thinking back to seventh grade when you guys first came in the classroom, uh, one student sticks in my head just because of the way he introduced himself. I usually go around and have students introduce themselves and I got to one young individual and he basically told me that he knew everything about engines and he was going to teach me a thing or two. And this is odd from us coming from a seventh grader, but I, uh, I, I, I took him for his word and it has proven true that Ricky has definitely taught me a thing, a thing or two about engines. If I had to give you any advice, it'd be to, to do something you're really passionate about and uh, don't let people tell you that you can't do it because they're wrong. And if you love what you do, you'll never work another day in your life. I know it's a cliche saying, but it truly is true. Um, find a passion, pursue it, and make it yours. Oh gosh, oh my gosh, oh. Sorry, I just drooled on myself a little bit there. For those of you that were in Spanish too last year, you know all about this. Taylor Matson specifically could not stop harassing me last year about the day that I spilled water on myself. Class of 2012, I just want to say it's been great getting to know you the last four years and good luck in your future. You guys were my first ninth graders, so you have a special place in my heart. I remember all of you my first day that I had that first year in Spanish one so well. Um, two different classes, one of you had a very uh, interesting class, let's leave it at that. Felicidades en su graduación y espero que hagan muy bien en su futuro. Adios. Hmm. These are pretty good. Well, class of 2012, you're graduating. Now, it wasn't too long ago that uh, it was my first year here and you're in my geometry class. And we had some pretty crazy times together. Like the time that Justin and uh, Taylor showed up to class late and I asked where they were and everyone said they were saving a muskrat. Now, naturally, I didn't believe them. But when Justin and Taylor came back with photographic evidence, I didn't have the heart to give up a tardy for it. They actually did save a muskrat even though I heard it die later on. Anyway, these are delicious gummy bears. Excuse me. Anyway, I just wanted to say good luck in whatever you plan to do after high school, and just make sure to stay, take some time out, stop, reflect, and just look at life, enjoy it, and uh, hopefully look back on high school with some fond memories. And uh, just wanted to finish off with saying uh, congratulations once again and you will be missed, class of 2012. Welcome, class of 2012. Uh, you finally made it. You're here, you're graduating, it's a very exciting day. Needless to say, and I don't think I have to say it, but the class of 2012 has always been a class that has really meant a lot to me. Uh, you guys will always share a, a special place in my heart, especially being that you were my very first class that I've uh, ever been able to teach. It's really been exciting. I've had a lot of fun. I really hope that after today you leave the walls in this building of Moose Lake High um, and you go on to amazing things. One more thing that I would really like to leave you with. Those of you that have been through my math classes that maybe weren't real bright and let's be specific, I'm talking to those of you over here. Uh, third row, right in that, yep, right there. The one thing that you should remember to get yourself through the hardest classes that you're going to come across uh, when you get to college is to saddle your wagons to the smart kids, especially uh, over there, you, yes, saddle your wagons to the smart kids. 
Hitch on to them and they will take you as far as you possibly need to go. Form study groups, but not with people like that. Those of you over here, not with people. But you, form study groups with people like that. And hey, you'll be fine. Class of 2012, congratulations. The fact that you're sitting in graduation right now means you've either found those last couple purple lit books or I broke down and signed your checkout sheets anyway, which I shouldn't have. Either way, you finally finished the journey that you started 13 years ago as wide-eyed five-year-olds embarking on a new adventure called school. Some of you started off in Moose Lake and now know more about each other than you ever wanted to know. Some of you have just started with us this year. Yet regardless of how many months or years you've been at Moose Lake High School, you make up the one and only class of 2012. And wow, have we been lucky to have you around. Over the past couple of years, I've had the privilege of teaching most of you at one point or another. And I have to say, it was an absolute joy to have had each of you walk through my classroom door. I may roll my eyes occasionally, or often, but I've also found myself laughing out loud with each of you more often than not. We started the year off with mythology, and after reading the Odyssey with you, I'm pretty sure I will never be able to read certain parts without laughing and thinking of your class. Your attention to detail really shed new light on a lot of those parts. I continue to appreciate your sense of humor and insightful questions as we wrote essays, performed ballads, and plugged away at Macbeth. And then fourth quarter debates came along. Although many of you said I was ruining your lives, I took a bit of a risk and promised Zach Kaiser that all of you would survive. And you did. Seeing each of you on that stage in front of dozens of students and teachers made me realize that you truly are a class of young adults ready to take on the world. I never expected two of you to take on Mr. Indahar and Mr. Caroline in an all-out open campus debate, but you did, and I have to admit, I was pretty dang proud when I saw you up there holding your own. Throughout the year, I saw just how well your mixed personalities come together to form the class of 2012. Some of you showed up every day ready to charge ahead, and some of you we were surprised when you did show up. Some of you always wanted to work in the hall, some of you begged to go outside, and some of you just begged to go. Some of you were willing to stay in the classroom and work as long as you were sitting on your table. Even once I got enough desks in the room for everyone, some of you never quite made your way to them. Apparently, the elementary playground is more interesting than Macbeth. Some of you came prepared with pens and pencils, notebooks and folders, and took plenty of notes just in case we might maybe have a quiz. Others of you never seem to notice that doing every assignment in crayon goes out of style after about first grade. Some of you came to us from far off places bringing new cultures and languages, and others of you wonder why we even offer Spanish and get on my case any time I try to bring Spanish into our curriculum, reminding me that this is English class, Nurse S. Unfortunately, even though it was English class, I couldn't get some of you to use proper grammar. But despite the ups and downs of senior English, as we read old English poems, watched crazy Macbeth movies, sorry, and wrote epic narratives in blog form, all of you survived, and some of you even admitted it wasn't so bad. Honestly, I'm sad to see you go. I'll miss our crazy discussions, your sense of humor, and the chance to interact with such a fun group of students each day. As you move on into the world beyond Moose Lake, I hope each of you make the most of your passions, skills, and talents. My advice to you? Keep asking the tough, sometimes weird questions, even when no one else will ask them. Do whatever it takes to stay awake for class or a job, even if it means standing up in the back of the room. And bring a hardcore Godwin attitude to everything you do. Blessings on each of you, class of 2012. Yes, Allie, it's time to go. Well, seniors, it's your big day. And uh, today, no paper test for you, so we'll get started. I do have a couple of challenges for you, though. One of those will be a lateral thinking puzzle. And here it goes. And by the way, anybody who solves it, um, there might be a reward for you. But in order to comply with school policy, of course, 
It can't be until after graduation. So uh, gummy bears may be in order for anybody who solves this particular lateral thinking puzzle. Here it is. It is the middle of the week, and in the middle of September of 2014, a certain social studies teacher is trolling in the middle of Trout Lake in the middle of the day after playing golf in mid-morning at the Wilderness Golf Club uh, on Lake Vermilion. What is going on? I also uh, have some memories uh, from some senior students who just happen to be present at the moment. Uh, there is something about the Asian Mafia uh, going on in the world, and it, it's, it's been a little bit of a, a concern of mine, but it, it seems to have worked out okay. Uh, and then there was the memory of being serenaded uh, a few years ago, and that had never happened to me before. It was quite a shock, quite a shock. Well, I just want to wish the seniors the best. I want you to make sure that uh, you follow the rules at all times, and that means remember that when you, when you go to the, a public restroom, you need to go directly there. You need to make sure you do not harm yourself or others that you are respectful of all of those things and you come directly back and there's no talking to anybody on the way there while you're there or on the way back. So keep those things in mind. It will serve you well in the future. Uh, and one last uh, puzzle, puzzle for you. Here it is on my board, created especially for you on this particular day. So in signing off, uh, one more assignment before you go, and that is be good, be kind, be careful, and have a good life out there. So I couldn't think exactly of what I wanted to say to you, so I decided that I needed to write a letter. So here's my letter to the graduating class of 2012. I can remember the first day you walked in here as seventh graders, looked up at me and wondered if you're going to survive having this crazy person as a teacher and even junior high at all. Well, it's been quite a while ago now. As slow as it may have seemed to go at the time, it's funny to think back at how quickly it's gone, hasn't it? Thank you for allowing me to be a part of watching you become the adults you are now. To the girls I had the privilege of coaching in basketball, you're a very talented group from the beginning. I know that early on I scared some of you by being so intense, but as I used to tell you, and my coach used to tell me, don't worry when I'm yelling at you. Worry when I quit yelling. I like to think that we learned not only a lot about basketball, but a lot about life. Remember, when you go somewhere scary, always tell somebody where you're going, always go in a group, and stick together. To my Knowledge Bowl team, thank you for another great season. We'll keep the traditions alive next year. When you were dressed up in your superhero, nerd, or whatever costumes, it always made me laugh. Even when I told you I was embarrassed, I never was. Thank you for not doing the bus crash one, though. My advice to you is to always remember to say thank you to people, leave places better than they were when you got there, and hold hands crossing the street. Some of you would do well to remember that last one. To my journalism class, Thank you for putting out another great school paper. The Moose Reader, well now that you remember to put the title on, was another shining success. I know that we do things the old fashioned way, especially with the waxer, but remember that sometimes it's good to slow down and do things the way they should be done. As tough as it was to get going some days, we actually got a lot done. To my college writing class, <clears throat> when you walked in, I told you that you would work harder than you ever worked for the lowest grade you ever got and you'd be happy with that grade. I told you that at times you'd want to quit, but if you made it, you would really have something to be proud of. <clears throat> I know how tough it was, but I'm very proud of the work you put in and effort you put forth. We also had an amazing community in that classroom. I miss that very much. I told you at the beginning to 
trust the process. I'm not sure you knew exactly what I was getting at then, but I know you do now. Do the same in your future. Just trust the process. <clears throat> to the graduating class of 2012, know that however old you get, however far you go, you'll always be our kids. Come visit once in a while and don't forget us. My last advice to all of you, never forget to say thank you, especially for the small things. Leave the world a better place when you leave, like you did here. Trust the process, take care of each other, and hold hands when you cross the street. I wish you all the success in the world, and I'll miss you when you're gone. Good luck, class of 2012. And I'll sign off the way I do every class. Have a good day. Hey, congratulations to the class of 2012. You guys are all right. I tried my darndest to knock your socks off back in eighth grade earth science, but I just couldn't do it. No one became permanently cross-eyed during the parallax activity. And some of you actually seem to enjoy passing all those rocks. I didn't see anybody choke on a pancake glacier model. And as far as I know, nobody, nobody received a detention for telling schist jokes in, in your other classes. You girls braved the wood ticks and water-filled ditches in the Sioux Hill Project just fine. Some years the girls have sweet-talked the boys into collecting data for them. I guess they just don't like wood ticks. Not a problem for the girls of 2012. You boys were pretty impressive as well. This was the first school group that one tripped all the portages on our fall BWCA canoe trip. That trip with you guys was so much fun. I wish we could do it again tomorrow. One of the things that stands out in my memory about this class is that you were especially nice to me. And sometimes I'm not quite sure why, but you were. Like the time I put Ricky Nelson in solitary confinement in the back of my room for two weeks because he was talking during study hall. While Ricky was in the back of the room in solitary confinement, he cleaned up the, the whole back of the classroom. He also meticulously categorized all my, all my magazines back there, and then to top it off, he advised me on how, how to fix my old truck. You're awesome, Ricky. Actually, I'd like to formally thank all of you for being so nice to work with. You're a wonderful group, and I'll always have good memories about this class. In closing, I'd like to share a quote by Dr. Howard Thurman with you. It goes like this. Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive, and then go and do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. I like this quote. My advice to you is to work hard at filling your lives with good adventures. Come alive. The adventures are out there, you just need to go for it. Be brave, have fun, and good luck to all of you. Attention staff and students, attention staff and students. Today for lunch we're having Italian Dunkers, Carrots and Pears. Tomorrow we're having ham and cheese, broccoli and dip with applesauce. Oh wait, seniors, you get to cook for yourself now. If there's hair in your food, if the milk is frozen, if the food isn't quite prepared correctly, guess who you get to blame now? Just yourself. I actually have 10 wise choices. Uh, if, if you do these choices, I think you'll have a good life. And here they are. Number one, choose integrity. Feel good about yourself and stand proud. Choice number two, choose to do your personal best. Do your best each day. Number three, choose a positive attitude. Learn to laugh at yourself. Laugh at your mistakes. Number four, choose self-responsibility. Take responsibility for your actions. Choice number five, choose quality over quantity. Quality of life over quantity of things like money and possessions. Choose to live the, by the golden rule, that's number six. Treat others as you would wish to be treated. Number seven, choose to see beauty in diversity. Be tolerant and understanding of those who are different than you. Number eight, choose a gratitude attitude. Be grateful to be alive. As a matter of fact, 
you should hug your parents today for the life that you've got. Number nine, choose to serve. Contribute to the world around you. And number 10, choose to create a vision statement and live by it. Define who you want to be and then live that vision. I think if you follow those choices, you'll have a very good life. And my final word of wisdom is this. Make it a great life or not. The choice is yours. Congratulations, class of 2012. You truly were a fun class to have here at Moose Lake High School. You will have many more great experiences in life ahead of you.